Up to this point, we've been talking about AI as something organizations use. Product strategy is where that framing breaks down. Because once AI becomes part of the product itself, the organization is no longer just deploying intelligence, it is employing it. This is a moment many leaders underestimate. They think adding AI to a product is a feature decision. In reality, it's a workforce decision. When products begin to sense, decide, and act on behalf of users, they are performing labor. Not human labor, but labor nonetheless. And that means the concept of a machine workforce is no longer theoretical. In intelligent organizations, products are not static offerings. They are evolving systems that operate continuously, learn from use, and improve without waiting for quarterly releases. This changes the nature of competition. Speed no longer comes from roadmaps. It comes from decision loops embedded inside the product. The organizations that win in this environment are not the ones with the best features. They are the ones with the fastest learning systems. This is also why no-code and low-code narratives are so misleading. They frame AI-powered products as easier to build when the real challenge is not construction, it's governance. Anyone can deploy an intelligent feature. Very few organizations know how to own one. Once a product contains agents that can adapt, personalize, or optimize autonomously, leadership must answer new questions. Who is accountable for machine decisions? What happens when optimization conflicts with brand ethics or regulation? How do you roll back behavior, not just code? And how do you explain outcomes when the product learns something no one explicitly programmed? These are not engineering questions. They are leadership questions. This is where control planes reappear, this time inside the product itself. Intelligent products require internal oversight systems, logging, evaluation, guardrails, human intervention points, and clear escalation paths. Without them, organizations ship intelligence they cannot explain and cannot safely scale. This is also where the machine workforce reshapes internal teams. As products take on more operational decision-making, humans shift roles. Product managers become intent designers. Engineers become system architects. Operation teams become exception handlers. And leadership becomes responsible for the behavior of systems that never sleep. This is why I often say that AI doesn't eliminate jobs. It rearranges responsibility. The companies that struggle are the ones that try to bolt intelligence onto old structures. The companies that succeed redesign roles, incentives, and accountability around continuous machine operation. And here's the part that most leaders miss. Once your product includes a machine workforce, your competitors are no longer just other companies. They are other systems. Systems that learn faster. Systems that adapt continuously. Systems that improve while you're still debating roadmaps. So in the next episode, I want to bring this back to leadership. Because managing a machine workforce requires a different mindset, a different cadence, and a different definition of what it means to be in control. And once leaders internalize that shift, the AICO stops sounding abstract. It starts sounding necessary.